Evening all, how we doing? Hey Pom the Pimp, good to see ya. Let's see who else is lurking around. We have Darius in Electrical Skateboard and Infinicel Sorted August. Hello. Alright, let's um let's get back into it. I did end up taking a look at this um off stream, which is just as well because it turned into quite the uh mini adventure. Hey Sunjama, good to see ya. Uh thanks for the AV, okay? Sweet, let's have a dig. So um, let's just get on the right machine. Uh, compile these guys who immediately break. That's not how I hoped this was going to begin. Um, huh. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, we'll take a couple of minutes to fix this, and then, then we will go through why the other stuff was broken. This was working a minute ago. Why did I restart the session? It was my own damn fault. Okay, so... Um, call with alien. It's freaking out there because it says there's no applicable method for um, Clyde with when called with arguments. No. Uh, but I don't know who's calling that with no. That seems like... Right, so it's getting the accessor. Um... Alright, let's... Uh... Start a little bit of this. So, foo. Continue. We get a foo in there. Just want to see where this starts shitting up. Okay, so we don't get a foo too. So something is breaking around here. I'm uh, guessing... It's this line. Um, get hash saying the call width is nil. That should be fine. Um, no, it's, so it's when it's accessing this, it's freaking out? I mean that... Oh, wait, hold on. We've got a function and a slot called call with. Is that kosher? Uh, let's just drop down to where the thing is defined again. Actors, there is a class around here. Sorry I'm moving so fast on this. I didn't want to be doing this at the beginning of the stream. Um, yeah, call with does have an accessor called actors call with. Um, but it's suggesting that this is nil. Um, I can go. Okay. When, um, no, unless actor kind, because that's what we're doing here. Oh! Unless. Unless there's a kind, break, foo, here, and let's just see what the hell is going on. That is rather strange. Okay. Apparently, the ship doesn't have a kind. Huh. Well, that's odd. I must have broken that very, very recently. Um... So I'm just going to jump into the commits and see what I've done, because there's got to be something. It's either right here. Nope, that's just the stuff we were just looking at. Um, so, can't wait to that finally got it working. I probably broke something in here. No? Okay. This is not how we're meant to be doing it. Oh, where is this? Oh, this in my collision checks. I don't think it's that. The only change I've made to this recently. God, it's all over the place. This is not something to do when your screen is really tiny. Um, or the resolution, rather, is really tiny. Let's just go down to spawn, then. So, basically... Right. This is the bit that should have said the kind. So, why didn't it? suggests that actors is wrong. Whoops. Continue. I know. I know. Just stop freaking out for a second so I can fix something. 
Um, nope, they're all there. They're all there. Let's uh, let's see if we can nuke this and start again. That is really strange, man. Um. We will be there very shortly. Let's see if we just nuke that and stop and start again if we if we get anywhere. Um. We still any errors open? No. Let's uh spawn a ship, I guess. Um and I can't remember how I need to do that. I think we've done this before, so let's just try this. Spawn. Um, the ship. This is weird as well, actually. It seems like God hasn't arrived yet, so let's do that. Okay, right. Now, now we're off, and now there's going to be shit everywhere. Okay. Actor API, now we've got this foo stuff going on. What happened there? That was so bizarre. Fine. Let's start again. Sorry, I'll just catch up with the chat. Um, <laughs> something I was saying, every coding session I have with things not working at all. But it was like, it was right there. Two seconds before the stream. God damn it. Uh, Mfiano says, hey, I'm in and out today, but I'll watch a bit. Cool, nice to have you even just a little. Um, so... Where we got to last time was we were having um, issues with collisions. And we have this little thing down here which says, let's move our dude up here for a second, for reasons that will become sensible later. Um, when we collide with something of kind alien, then we're going to just print blurp. Um, that's what we want to happen. But it was not doing that. We were having all kinds of troubles with SSBOs. Um, if I jump over to the render function down here, we were writing into um, an SSBO, like this guy, um, from a fragment shader, and it just wasn't happening. Um, and I got really confused of what was going on. Um, and there were a few parts to it, so I'm going to try and go through that on the stream. Um, let's go down to run collision checks and just see where I've left this code. Um, yeah, this should be okay. So, the first part of the debugging was is this fragment shader running at all? Like, So what we do is we render all of the different kinds of actor, one at a time, um, into a big old texture. And it's the size of the world. So at the moment, 2048 by 2048. And we can actually show that a second. So let's show the one for the aliens. So let's do this. And you can see here's just the aliens being drawn into this big old texture. Um, we can check down here for the one that's for ships. There's our ship. And the idea is that we're then going to, let's see if I've got the doodle pen and all that working. Um, we're going to draw ourselves a second time, but we're not going to draw to the screen. All we're going to do is we're going to, wherever the fragment shader runs, we're going to look um, in that position in the another mask to say, hey, is there any pixel colored in there? And if there is, that's a collision. So anywhere that we've got, a, got some color and they've got some color in their mask, um, then we're going to say that's a collision and register that. So, let's get rid of this guy. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was actually be able to see if this thing was ever running, this fragment shader. So, what I'm going to do, and I'm already confused, is that this might not be working now. Or we might be in some strange state. But, um, it's in a world that's um, it's drawing into a place that's 2048 by 2048. Like the viewport when we are doing this run collision checks, which is running this stuff, is 2048 by 2048. And as far as I understood, um, like by setting the viewport, that was the area you were drawing into. And we'll get into some subtleties of that, why that was kind of wrong later. Um, we're drawing ourselves on the screen here, but what it should mean is if we return like red from here, we should be able to fly ourselves down, and when we get near zero, we should see our mask, and like we should see something around here that's our um, 
our collision quad. And now that's not working either, which is really special. I'm wondering why. What am I in this time? So I'm not in here. Oh, for God's sake. I specifically broke things again so we could have um, the example on the stream. I don't think we need that. No, we definitely don't need that. How can I demonstrate success if I'm failing at failing again? This is annoying. Whoa, dearie me. Now we're getting all kinds of... Breathe deep. Okay. How am I going to show this now if this is not... <laughs> it's not even doing the basics now. God damn it. Right. I'm going to have to... Oh, worst nightmare, guys. God damn it. Right, so now, yes, now we got collisions again. This is the final part of <laughs> where I wanted to get to, was showing that collisions can work. Um, all those blurps were written by um, this down here, which is when collide with alien, print, blurp. And once it's full, you can see down in here the uh, number of lines we're writing. Um, so yeah, anytime that number's incrementing, we're hitting one of these guys. And it's and it's a pixel perfect collision stuff. So that bit's okay. But the point was, I was trying to get it back to where I was earlier, where I was just drawing, just drawing this thing to show the mask problem. But now all of a sudden it doesn't want to do it. Which is rather frustrating. Whew. Okay, so I'm just not sure how I'm going to be able to explain this probably without showing me the thing. I might restart just to see if I can get this uh, get this going. There's so little that's changed. Right. Um, We haven't got an FBO bound here, I don't think. Um, oh, we're not even going to be able to see that. Run collision checks. Count. Yep. That's all fine. Ah, oh, fun. Right, one second. Let's just see what's going over here. Um, and uh, Mfiano is reminding us that next Friday is the Lisp Game Jam. Uh, so make sure your tech is working, because mine isn't. Right. Should we just do a quick restart and see if we can get this back in the state that we need it to? Because at the moment, so what this is doing, run collision checks, is setting a viewport, is looping through, is map Ging a load of stuff, and then it's pulling back some results. And this all looks terrible because obviously did this when, uh, when I had screen real estate. Um, but this should be drawing to the screen. We're not bat. We have no FBO bound. Um, so this should be drawing to the screen. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, depth could be an issue. Let's just... Uh, there's just one little thing I want to try here. Because it might be relevant. Um, what would that be? Zero... Minus ten zero zero. Because I messed around with some of the depth stuff earlier. But I've restarted since then. I know I have, so... This should still be working. And then when we set the other FBO, everything actually works. We get all the collision that we should do. Mm. Oh, computers. And me. Let's, uh, let's do a quick restart. Anyway, let me know how... <laughs> How's your week been? How's your coding gone? Um, 
we'll get this set up. What I'd like to actually do is I'd like to, because I did this stuff off stream, I'm going to step through everything once we get it set up again. Um, we're going to have a look at what the issues actually were. And then I think we're just going to play with a very simple shader effect that I like and I, I want to have a go at. Um, but right now, we just need to see what this is. It's nice because I had to... Ah. So what, one of the first things I can talk about is that after the stream, I looked into how Atomics were supported and we had some issues in um, Vario with regards to Atomics. So those have been fixed now and they will be in the next release. Uh, so it's just as well, because even if we had done this on the stream, we would have run headlong into um, compiler issues. And there's no way I'm fixing those on stream because they are just, they're like, I need to actually focus um, to get that to get that going. Let's see uh, what happens this time. Okay. Still don't think we're getting our collision mask, which is very annoying. Um, let's just have a look at Daft and let's see if anything changed here. Nope, we're calling update actors. And then down here somewhere. We run our collision checks. But outside of everything. Um, why wouldn't the quad be visible? Why wouldn't the quad be visible? It's very strange. Let's just have a look because what's odd about it actually is just that we've got some shaders that are working. Let's get back to, uh, let's bring up render twice so we can compare what's going on here. We've got this shader and this shader, which is setting up the vertex stuff. Um, what I guess matters here is the clip position because all we're doing here is, well, we're reading a bunch of stuff and then we're in, like putting out the color um, red. So there shouldn't be anything for us to actually see here that's... So it's got to be just down to this. And let's see what I've been doing. So I unpack the world position. Um, yeah, the Z is the only thing that I think could be, could be janky. Um, if I inspect the actors right now, because I know I changed that. Um, that was something I fucked with. So, if I go in here, we can see that, um, where is it? Yeah, go in the actors for the ship, and then the current state. Oh yeah, so here's the current list of ships, and here's one of the ships, and then it has some state. Um, where is the state? Public state, there we go. It's right in front of my eyes. And so its position is minus 20. Um, so, let's bring up render. Oh yeah, we've got render here, nice. So we have minus 20. See this transform and this transform are exactly the same. And then things go a little differently. We do this vert game um, units to GL thing. And we divide the position by some stuff, but Z remains one. And then we multiply that by one in the Z as well. So it doesn't look like the Z is getting changed at all. So whatever the position is passed in is not gonna get divided there and it's not gonna get multiplied there. So Z is gonna be exactly the same as when it went in. Um, That's kind of it. We don't do anything fancy here. It's really strange. But I would have thought that was the problem if we're not if we're not seeing it. Uh, the other thing is we could, we could be way off screen. Oh, wait. Yes, that's what it is. I've been doing all this testing earlier today on a, at a much higher resolution. Let's do... Oh, this is actually going to make it kind of hard to see what's going on. Okay, so there's no real bugs. But it's going to be a little tricky to see. So how are we going to do this? 
I think if I get rid of this, whoops, get rid of this buffer. Whoa, it did not take kindly to that. Let's get rid of this. Let's, um, well, because this is going to be slow as shit. Let's uh, just stop everything for a second. And let's scroll this this way. Give ourselves some room and start again. And hopefully, yes. Okay, so now you can see the red guy up there. That is our collision box. Fuck. Just thinking about this stuff still messes me up. Okay, so. We got our ship. And when we succeed, we should see blurp. So when we collide with things, this number down here should be increasing. So I'm going to scroll this down a bit. We can just see that number fucking about. And we can carry on. Finally. So. This is our ship um, in the uh, in in the full world. So the first thing I could do is I just wanted to check that I could see this um, box at all. Now we can, so that's fine. Um, and then I just start messing around with these values so we can see something. So we take the color um, the same as us. So this is our sprite color. So we can we know we're reading that correctly at least. Um, and then we go and read what are the colors in the mask at our current world position and this is the mask color and now if this works correctly what it should be is that when we overlap with things like you can see there you should be able to see a bit of this alien in that mask in that um in that quad okay so things are looking are looking actually good so far um I wonder if I can set the, because uh, some of the next bit is um, screen height and game units. So yeah, let's set this to 1, 200, and whoops. Okay. Now the problem was, I was getting like, let's just keep going for a second. Oh yeah, let's actually just finish off this uh, stuff with a mask. I then wanted to... Like, I don't need colors. I basically need a yes or a no something is um, colored in here. So what I do is... and I, Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I only want it to be places where my pixels are. So I don't want to include the alpha mask. So I take... Where is it? The mask color and multiply it by um, the W coordinate of our color. So that's our alpha. So that's the collision call. Let's do this. And now, if we get it in the right place, we it should be should be able to see that it is a chunk of the alien in the exact shape of our ship. It's a little tricky to see. Um, so what we just do is we use step and a threshold to say, hey, if any of the components in the color of the mask are greater than 0.1, uh, just set it to 1, which is going to be white. So let's do this and make it a VEC4 so we get a white color. And then you should be able to see that that was the shape of the spaceship and the only the bit that's covered by the alien is white. So that bit works. Um, then I had a bunch of hoo-ha with atomics so I had to go and get those working. Um, hey love like Semtex, good to see you. Um, but that was the main part of actually working out the collision stuff and then all we do is we have an ID um, which was the we're just using instance ID and we're using put it, using that as an index into our SSBO and we're writing the result which is just collision bell and every fragment that has a collision just it, well, basically every fragment just adds in its collision value which is either going to be zero or one so it should be that every pixel um, increments but I actually see way higher numbers than I was expecting so there's something a bit funky there but Blah, doesn't matter. Um, oh, and just for reference as well, we set this to zero in the vertex stage, which I think is okay. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's safe because, like, we must have processed these vertex points in order to be able to rasterize this quad, in able to, to be able to draw this thing. So that should be all right. So what ended up happening was though, let's, um, if you can see down here, this number is still increasing, lots of blurps all over the place. Um, but as soon as I got high enough, 
Let's just clear this. We'll see the ship collides and we get no collision detection, no blurb. So, I flew around a little until I could get the first actual collision, and it occurs as soon as I get this quad back on screen, which makes no sense to me. It was really annoying, so it, somehow it was related to this space that we were rendering into. And this is where things get a bit funky, because last week I had basically uh, I'd said in the YouTube um, comments that, oh, I worked it out, it was to do with vertex culling. That would cause the problem, because if the vertices are being culled, um, then the fragment shade is never going to run. And the issue we were seeing was we were never getting the assignment to our SSBR. So, let's, um, let's bring this back down to what we had before. Oops, round about there. Right, back to our normal stuff and start. Cool. Um, let's set, our f set this back to 600, so we're back in our normal space. Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. What a mess. Right. So the next question was, why, when that thing was off screen, were we not getting collisions? Um, and it sounded like something to do with uh, fragments being discarded. So we jump over to the Googles and not into our chat. And we look for some things. So the first result I found was this, which seemed perfect, right? It's about what's going to happen if um, the viewport is larger than the FBO you're rendering into. And this chap says, um, a fragment which lies outside the bounds of an FBO, uh, of a bound FBO, will fail the pixel ownership test. According to 14.9 of the specification, 4.3 core profile, if a fragment fails the pixel ownership test, or this is a test, no further processing is performed, and the fragment shader will not execute for that fragment, which is interesting. But there's a little bit of a what what seems to me like a problem uh, with that. Let's go around here. Oh, it's white. Can't deal with that. Uh, Fourteen point nine is up here somewhere. Doot. Here we are. Um, there are a bunch of tests that every fragment has to go to, uh, go through before they're written into a buffer. So they can be discarded by the system based on whether um, the, it, the pixel is owned, which we'll talk about in a second, whether it's inside a scissor region, where, whether there's been a stencil defined, all that kind of stuff. But in certain cases, those tests can run early. They're meant to run after the fragment shader, um, but the GL specification it says it happens afterwards, but the specification defines how things should be, or, or how things behave as if they are. So as long as whatever change you make, still the result is still as if it was running the way the spec said, it's all fine. So basically, they say it should run afterwards. You can move it sooner than that, as long as all the results are exactly the same as they would be if the thing was running afterwards. So as if it was the way the spec said. So what happens a lot is that these fragment tests are done before the fragment stage because if you can, if you can work out that you're going to discard the fragment then, you don't have to run the fragment shader at all. And that's perfect. And that it looks like, like exactly what was happening when our quad wasn't in the on, on the screen. Um, the fragment shader wasn't running. But this says okay so the pixel ownership test and what they said is that what the chap said was exactly right his quote was saying um which one was it was how, how did he uh, start his da, 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 da. if fragment fails the pixel ownership test then um it will not be processed by any subsequent stage including fragment shader execution that would be ideal so we go to the pixel ownership test and what this is actually about is to do with the default frame buffer. So it's saying, do I own this pixel that I'm trying to write into? Um, because normally we're, we're doing like this. We're, we're rendering into a, um, into a buffer that is controlled by the operating system or a window manager or whatever. Right? So we need to know if we own that pixel because someone might have moved a window in front of this window. And then we don't want to draw in all the places that window is. So the operating system can say, no, you don't own these pixels. You can't render to them. So this test is meant to check for that. 
Um, possible results are that the fragment is discarded or some subset of the subsequent... Ugh, hard to say. Some subset of the subsequent per-fragment operations are applied to the fragment. This test allows the window system to control the GL's behavior, for instance, when a GL window is obscured. If the draw frame buffer is a frame buffer object, the pixel ownership test always passes. So it doesn't say here, it doesn't mention at least, whether the fragment that we're trying to make has to be inside the size of the um, frame buffer object. It just says that these tests, will, this test will always pass. And there's another little wrinkle in this, um, is that these, these early tests um, are only going to run early um, in very set circumstances, and they can be... Um, it can be that GL implementation has to do them afterwards. And so I went on a big old read, basically. Went through this per sample processing. This talks about the early operations. And let's have a look. Um, and here's our pixel ownership test again. And again, it says this effect, this test only affects the rendering to the default frame buffer. So if this was true, then what we should be able to do is this. Let's, um, like, where's our run uh, collision checks? We're saying that this is failing because we're outside of this um, default frame buffer. Fine. And what we'll do is we'll make an FBO um, that's got a single attachment, and the dimensions of that attachment are 2048, 2048, which is our, our world size that we're interested in. So we make this, we set up some variable called foop, um, and we shove that in it, and then we go down here and we just say with FBO bound uh, foop. And now, when we collide with things, we should see blurp. Where well, it's happening there. Oh no. <laughs> what? What, 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 what? Oh no, I'm an idiot. Of course it's going to work with 2048 by 2048. That is not the test I wanted to prove. God damn it, Chris. I wanted to see if we could have a frame buffer that was one by one. Because the issue was if we're outside of it. So set a foop to uh, that. Right? Now we bring our ship back in, wherever he is. And notice that when I'm colliding with things, there is no blurp being written in the REPL, which means something is still discarding all those fragments, which is really odd, because this, what I've read from the specs say, says that it isn't the ownership test, but whatever it is is behaving exactly like the ownership test, which is really fucking annoying. So, I, I mean, it could be that this implementation, this driver is just doing it wrong, Hard to tell. Um, there are also other oper other cases when these things can't happen early, and I want to try and find that. Uh, not primitive assembly. That's when things get made into, like, vertices get grouped into their primitives. Not face culling. I went through this as well. Rasterization. A bunch of stuff happens, but isn't really well documented here. Early fragment tests. Now, here's where things get fun. Um... Limitations, this is it. So the OpenGL specification states that the operations happen after fragment processing. However, a specification that however a specification only defines apparent behavior, so the implementation is only required to behave as if it happened afterwards. That's a much better explanation than I try to give. Therefore, an implementation is free to apply early fragment tests if the fragment shader being used does not do anything that would impact the results of those tests, like writing to frag depth. We can do that. Oh no, let's uh, get back up to, this is not the file that we wanted to be on. These are not the droids. This is not the file. So, set f, uh, gl frag depth, pen, I don't know, like that. No collisions. So it's not early. It's not to do with it being early or not. This code just isn't running, which is rather annoying. So, uh, and it's also, it's, this stuff is interesting as well. Um, so yeah, so if a fragment writes to frag depth, thus changing the fragment's depth value, then early testing cannot take place since the test must use the new computed value. 
There can be other hardware-based limitations. Um, this is an old test, blah, 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 blah. Um, here we go, this is the fun. Similarly, if the fragment shader discards the fragment with a discard keyword, this will almost always turn off early depth tests on some hardware. So again, throw a discard in there and um, throw, throw, throw a discard, throw a discard in there and it should have stopped the early testing. And I was thinking if early testing hasn't applied, um, like if an early discard hasn't got rid of us, then our atomic add and stuff like that should work. But there are other things going on as well. Um, stuff I didn't understand about discard, which was around here somewhere. Let's have a look. Fragment discard. Here we go. This is pretty exciting. And this is something that probably is applicable to us. Love like Semtex is asking, can the lower bounds 0.01 for the collision test be too high? Yes, definitely. I just threw a value in there. It could be anything greater than zero. Um, I just, yeah, I wanted something that was definitely like not in the fuzzy edges of a, of the sprite. Um, fragments generated by the rasterizer may be discarded. Yes, this may happen due to per fragment tests or by command from the fragment shader. That's like us writing discard. No matter what, a discarded fragment will never affect any of these, including SSBOs and atomics, which means, so I, I didn't, didn't read that right. I was thinking that uh, the discard will never ne will never affect these happening, as in they'll still happen, uh, but the fragment will be discarded, and so it's like it's not killing execution, but it's not that at all. It's if you discard, none of this stuff takes effect, even if your fragment shader ran. So any sets you did inside this aren't going to work. So. My original plan of just um, eat, like without this um, failed FBO thing here, of just rendering to the regular scene, but then using discard at the end of this and just using this for kind of computation will not work, because the discard is going to cause the, cause the atomic stuff not to have an effect. In fact, the fact it was working at all before um, was bad. Okay, so. We know we can't use discard, but we know that there's something off with the fact that when uh, the vertex we're interested in is off screen, uh, for whatever that means, it's not going to do the tests that we want. This this uh, fragment shade is not going to run. So there is a nice little caveat in frame buffer, and that is empty frame buffers. Seen as we're already using SSBOs, we're already using GL 4.3. So we can use other stuff from GL 4.3 as well. It's possible, and this is, let's just go through this. It's saying it's possible to render a frame buffer object that has no attachments. Obviously, none of the fragment shader outputs will be written anywhere, like to the screen or to any kind of buffer or a memory or whatever, but rendering otherwise can proceed as normal. So as far as GL is concerned, it's writing somewhere. So you, the fragment shader will just run. This is great. Um, it's like discard on every output, but doesn't cause any of the other side effects. This is useful for arbitrary reading and writing of image data from shaders rather than uh, writing to a bound frame buffer. Also perfect, that's what we want. We are writing to an SSBO, an arbitrary buffer. Um, however, of course, rasterization is always based on the area and characteristics of the bound frame buffer. These characteristics, size, number of samples for multi-sampling, etc., would normally be defined by those uh, images, or in Keppel parlance, the GPU arrays that are bound to the uh, FBO. With no images attached, these characteristics must be defined in some other fashion. And then this is the instructions of how to do that. Keppel didn't support empty frame buffers a couple of hours ago. I fixed that now. Um, I'm not, I haven't merged it yet into master because I'm not entirely happy with the API. I'm just not sure how strict it should be. Um, it also adds another if every time um, that you set, every time you set an attachment, there's one more if statement that has to happen. I'm not, I, you know, I just like, any time I'm costing anyone anything, it, it makes me a bit nervous. And so I just want to, I want, I want to look at this a bit more. At the moment, it's kind of strict, um, but we have added it. So what you can do now, let's bring up the REPL. We can do make FBO. 
but rather than specifying which number of attachment, you can just say nil. You have to give it dimensions, so we're going to give it the dimensions that are the size of our world, so 2048, 2048. Also, we need to get around to defining, to adding the world defining stuff soon, because it's getting really annoying just fudging this everywhere. And if you do this, you'll get an FBO which is empty, that's got no attachments, that's just it. Defar uh, temp1 is that FBO. Right, but now, the fun bit, if we go to our bit here, say uh, with FBO bound, and do um, whatever we just said, was it temp1? Temp1, yes. Then we'll get some progress, but there's one last thing, and you'll, you've seen it down here. Normally, Keppel um, sets the viewport size that you're rendering into to match the FBO you're binding. So you can say, um, like, with viewport means that with FBO bounds, also going to set the viewport size to match the size of the FBO. And this is true by default. So if you want to turn that off, you say nil. But it also needs to know which attachment it should look at to get the size. So um you have the attachment for size parameter where you can specify zero or one or it should be the size of the depth um, attachment or whatever in the case of an empty frame buffer um i've decided that you have to specify t and this is the only time that it's valid to pass in t as an attachment name um and it's only valid to do that into attachment viewport or similar things and yeah, when it's an empty FBO. It's a bit annoying to try and explain uh, at the moment, which is why I'm not ready to merge. I would like the API to be fluid to talk about because it's easier to teach if it's easier to talk about. Um, but anyway, if we do this, suddenly in our REPL, we get collisions and we get collisions like everywhere. So if we just do this and wait for the next guy to spawn, there it is. So all over the place, so we're actually getting what we wanted. So we do have to set the FBO size. So what I'm guessing it is, is that the ownership test is to do with the bounds of the FBOs as well, but it's just not well documented. Or, or we have to just assume that this implementation implements the spec incorrectly. Um, but yeah, now we're getting collisions. And this means if we can go into the test and get rid of this blurp nonsense, and go and put in something useful like if a ship collides with a bullet or if yeah then suddenly we can get back to actually shooting things um, and they die and these collisions are based on our collision mask SSBO stuff and things like that which we were doing before so that is where we were trying to get to and took way way too long <sighs> that was that um, so yeah I, I'm not 100% on the behavior um, that GL is defining right now. Um, but we at least can get collisions working, which is a relief. Because uh, and I'm really glad that I didn't do try to do this on the stream because today was just, yeah, I just spent a lot, a long time being very confused while I was working out uh, this stuff. Pond up him saying, congrats, thank you. So, um, we don't need to use our temp1 FBO because there's already a world empty FBO, uh, which we're using instead. Which is the, exactly the same thing. And uh, yeah, one bit I didn't show in run collision checks is just... This is a mess. I, I can't wait to clean all this up. We're going to have to do a cleanup episode. Um, or I'll do that off stream, I'm not sure. Um, what happens is we run the check the uh, checking collisions pipeline here which writes um, all the collisions into the SSBO and then we map that SSBO's GPU array as a C array and then we loop through um, a bunch of the actors and just set the results um, to be true if the value in the SSBO is greater than zero so if there's been any collisions, the value is going to be greater, greater than zero, and we write true into the results. 
And this is then what's queried later on. So there's a one frame latency on getting results. Um, if we go to actor API, so API actor uh, call with, which we're going to rename in a second. Um, yeah, so this part of the function specifies that it wants to receive collisions um, with this kind of actor. And this part of the code looks up the results. This is horrible to look at. And it's getting worse. Um, looks up the results um, to see if it did, in fact, collide with something from that mask. And this is like, so this is setting up a request. And the next frame, there will be information here. And so just in, in the first case, if there's, you know, if this thing knows what index it would be with inside a collision uh, request, and if there are results, then we try and look them up. Otherwise, we don't, which is going to be true of the first case. And Pondabib is saying push, which I think I already did. Um, yeah, I think all this stuff is me just undoing things that worked so I could demonstrate them and then getting confused because the resolution is so much lower. But yeah, this is... Uh, oh yeah, I, I don't want this anymore. Um, so yeah, that can go and that can go, sure. And um, there's nothing really here. That's a comment. We don't need that. And this doesn't matter. So it's a case of whether we want to push this stuff, which we might. Yeah. Tiny tweaks. Cool. So that's where we've got to. We've got collision masks kind of working. Um, the code is a, just a nightmare world at the moment. But it is at least working more than it was <laughs> before. So, what's next? Um, what time is it actually? 2047. Okay. Well, there's a couple of things I want to do. I wanted to take a tiny break from uh, this bloody collision stuff and uh, there was this uh, little thing on Twitter a while ago which is really cute I mean it's got just absolutely horrendous amounts of bloom um, but this person's making I'll play it through twice so you can see the effect it's a really nice it's a really nice little flame effect and I wondered if we could just do this on the stream um because it would be kind of cool. Just going to do the basic one. And uh, we might stick in a crappy bloom as well. But probably not. So the first stage is, yeah. We uh, are... we going to play? Yes. We're going to get some noise. We're going to color it, whatever. And we use a threshold to just work out. Oops. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. So, no. that We have a, a, a square. And then we use noise to set parts of it transparent. That's just like thresholding. And then we create a gradient, which we apply here. So this is like, we're gonna fade out the square all the way up. But because we've got this uh, noise on it as well, we're gonna be fading out some of the holes. And then just by moving the noise, we get this kind of nice flowy texture. And then he starts throwing extra colors on it and all that kind of stuff. And then applies a mask, which is pretty sweet. And then apparently warps the mask uh, using some stuff. So I thought it would be kind of cool just to go through that um, I mean, it's super blurry, but um, I think it, I think it'd be a fun little exercise just to knock through this because I could do with half an hour. That's not this collision stuff, to be honest. Um, if I copy the video address and oh fucking everything's a fucking action. Oh, and of course I can't just get the fucking video, can I? Um, Oh no, that was the object. All right. Undo last remove. I kind of just want this. How do, how do I get this guy on its own? Um, oh, if I had YouTube download installed, I could actually just download this thing. But anyway, we'll, we'll just work from here instead then. Ah, oh, hate, hate. Right. Let's start with a square. And... Uh, We'll just stick it in the main loop. We don't care about this. We'll get rid of the REPL. We're not going to be using it. Let's go back to Daft. 
and we're gonna throw a clear in here <laughs> get rid of everything it's still running in the background but we just don't need to see it uh, we're gonna call a function called moo let's go and define that down here Defund moo this is where our little experiment's gonna live call it right so now this is getting run every frame um, let's make ourselves a little a little render pipeline so defund g um, so moo vertex shader is going to take a vert which is a vec2 um, I need some coffee, god damn it. Mmm, poisonous caffeinated bilge. Right, um, <clears throat> we're going to return one value, so we don't need values. We can just do vert, zero and one, put it into clip space, one so our w divide doesn't fuck us up. That should be a perfectly serviceable vertex um, shader. So let's build a fragment shader which takes nothing and is going to output just red for now. So a big old screen full of red. That should be enough. And then let's define a pipeline for this. So def pipeline G, it's the moo pipeline, um, and it's going to take the moo vertex shader, which is a vec2, uh, and the moo fragment shader, which takes nothing. So we compile this, everything looks groovy so far. We can say map G over the moo pipeline, um, with, what's it called, uh, get world for stream v2? Fine. We do this, now everything is red. That's our um, full screen quad being rendered there. So, how do we start? Well, we, we need a couple of components. Um, there was noise, we need some noise. Well, that, that's, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna go and close this. So we can just switch backwards and forwards between this. Pause, you bastard. Right, there. We need some noise. So what we can do for that, let's uh, just make a little um, flame noise is going to take a vector 2. So we'll just call it UV. Vector 2. And it's going to call Perl and noise on it. In fact, actually, what we're going to need, if we're going to call this from the fragment stage, we need to pass that in. So we're going to say UV is going to be a VEC2. Compile this. Go down here and say this is a VEC2. Um, compile this. Now it's complaining that, hey, you've defined a pipeline, but the outputs from this stage don't match up with the inputs of this stage. So we just need to fix that up. So we do values. Um, and then we need to calculate our UVs. So this guy is in the range minus one to one. So we, what we can do is we can just times um, it by 0 0.5, which will get it into the range minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, and then plus 0 0.5, um, which is gonna then push it up to zero to one. Say continue, everything's back to normal, so we're good to go. Um, Sorted August say, Twitter's UI is cancer. Typo there. Twitter is cancer. Yeah, it's like... Ah, oh, it's, it's a shit heap. Um, Love like some text says, uh, good catch up on the collision. Thank you. I'm glad they actually came across in the end. Um, <laughs> Sunjava says, runtime Perlin makes me feel itchy. It's awesome. It's good for you. Rub it in your skin. The itching's just, you're not applying enough. Right, um, so we go Perlin noise. Um, let's go and use our new documentation functions. We can see there's no documentation, but we can at least see the overloads, which is a vector. So we can just pass in UV. Um, and let's uh, ignore that and we'll just do vec4 flame noise um, UV. And we get not very much. Uh, and the reason for that is we're quite zoomed in. So let's go and multiply this by 10 and then we can get a bit of that. And it's going into minus one as well. So actually there is another function we should be able to use, uh, which was called remap and that's part of Nineveh. So that's available there. And you give it um, a value and then it's original range and it's new range. So the um, original range was um, zero, no, what is it? Minus one, minus one to one. Wait a second, how is this specified? 
Maybe I'll just do this by hand. <laughs> this is the same as the other one. I'll look into that remap, remap function later. Um, times 0.5 uh, plus 0.5. The astute amongst you might have noticed that we no longer have to turn this into a vector 2 to add... Oh, actually, up here. We no longer have to turn this guy into a vector 2 to be able to add it to a vector 2. I um, finally went through and added the rest of those functions to GLSL spec. Um, so now all that stuff works in Vario as well. That, again, will be coming out this month in, uh, in this month's release. So, times by 0.5, do that. So now we have some noise. Um, that should do. He's got a few more holes, so maybe we just don't add so much. 0.3, <laughs> you know, we start getting holes. Um, what we can also do is just push it up and then just um, take the maximum of this and zero. Um, that'll clamp all that stuff to zero. Is that what we want to do? No, we almost want to do the other one, don't we? We're going to say min this and one. And then we can start bringing this down. We start cutting holes in things. Ah, that's also not right. What am I trying to do? To be honest, um, like actually doing the uh, saturate and um, adjusting the 0.5 is probably the way to go. 0.4. And we're chopping out certain areas. I will see how it looks in a minute. So we've got that and we've got some noise. So then we take our color and we multiply it by the noise. Fair enough. We take this. Multiply red by noise. Now we've got red noise. Cool. Um, we're not cool enough to have horrendous amounts of bloom yet. Okay, so then we need a gradient. So let's get a, no a flame gradient. Flame grad. From a UV. We need a function for that. Defun G. Flame grad. UV back 2. And that we're just going to use um, our UV Y value. So we can just say Y of UV. And let's run this. And we get, we actually want it to be the other way around. We want it to go from light to dark. We want it to go from 0 to 1. <clears throat> so we can just do 1 minus, whoops. There we go. So that's the ramp. Again, perceptual brightness is a bastard, so um, we might have to fiddle with this some as well. And, um, hey, I wonder actually if we can just put some tone mapping on this. Tone map linear. What happens if we do that? Ah, it explodes. Oh yeah, it wants to tone map a VEC4, I expect. That's, um... And it also does... One sec. We have no such overload. Let's have a look at the overloads then. It takes a color... Oh, it's a vector 3 for a start. And an exposure, which is 0, maybe? 1? 1. 1.5? Ah. Once again, I just don't understand this stuff. <laughs> That's been on my list of to-dos for a while. is Because that should be for the gamma correction, but I... I I don't get decent results out of this stuff yet. And it's purely down to my understanding. Or rather, lack of understanding. So we've got a ramp, apparently. And um, now we could multiply this color by the noise and the ramp. Um, and get rid of this code. And everything goes away. It's rubbish. Oh yeah, it's because of these zeros that are still hanging around. Okay, so now we're getting some fade out here. Um... So that's something. And then the idea is we scroll the noise. Okay, so when we're sampling our noise function, we're also going to need time. So if let's do add a uniform called now. Uh, now, and we'll move this down to a new line. And now is going to be a float. Pardon me. And what should we do with it? Oh, well, we need to pass it in. I think we've got a function for this already. Yep, let's pass in that. Just for anyone who's joining us for the first time, now is just returning a value in seconds since 
some point in the past. <laughs> and then, we are flame noise is now going to take um, now, which is a float. And we go down here, our flame noise can now take now. And now we can use it. So, this is going to start getting hairy, so we're just going to say pos let pos be 10 times uv um, and we're going to add 0 and now boom that exploded oh yeah of course we're going to wrap the lead around the stuff or it will not work and it scrolls the wrong way Not anymore. Well, his thresholding is way better than mine. Um, if noise is less than 0 0.5, alpha equals 1. Oh, yeah, that's we were doing. Uh, we were doing alpha, weren't we? We are meant to be doing alpha. So... Oh yeah, so he oh yeah he does this with an if statement as well. You don't need that at all. Um, we're gonna do right. So our flame noise. We're gonna change all this now. Um, yeah, let's get rid of all that. Go do some noise, and then we say if it's what is it less than 0 0.5. That means we can do a step function. Um, a step function has an edge. down here um, and the edge is 0 0.5 below it it will be 0 and then um, above it it's going to be 1 and seen as this one is saying if you're below 0 0.5 you're 1 uh, then we just do it the other way around so we do minus 1 um, so it's going to be 1 and then it's going to minus yeah whatever this value is which is going to be 0 or 1 Cool. Yes, we get a very different looking. <laughs> we get a very different looking thing when we do that. Holy shit! Um, so we're gonna have to mess around with that Berlin noise or this value at the very least. Um, thing is, you just get such hard. He's getting really hard cuts there, but then just relying on the fact that he's Bloom's gonna wash it all out, which is really interesting. And then this gradient must be super strong. Um, Oh, wow. So he's actually using that as a cutoff. So if noise is less than 0.5 times the gradient, then alpha equals 1. Um, so, okay, yeah, that's being done in a very different way than I was fucking around with it. So we're going to use this for the... We're going to use this for the alpha, whatever the result is. Um, let's move our <coughs> flame noise there. And this is our threshold. And we're going to multiply this by the flame gradient, apparently. Let's just call it gradient. And we can compute it here. It is gradient. Let's just... Mm, yeah, what happens if we do this? Oh, we're back to... Oh, yeah. We'll get there. We'll be there in a minute. Gradient is flame grad. Uh, UV. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm actually going to put this as a multiply for now. I'm not sure about that. Okay, so yeah, we're getting bigger holes on the way up now. Um, still going to bring this down a bit. Just a square with color. And then if the noise is less than 0 0.5, 
then he's just setting the alpha to zero which to be fair is just going to be like we can do that just by we're just going to multiply the amount of color we're putting out which is which we'll do for now um sunjama is asking um which tone mapper are you using um i've got a i've got a few operators let's just uh jump over to that where is that tone tone map linear in my library i've um i went to this website And it had a bunch of, um, yeah, tone mapping operators, which just seemed cool. Um, and they include the uh, power one over 2.2 .2 gamma correction thing. Um, so basically I took all of these. So like we've got the um, linear, Reinhardt, um, the uh, names that I'm gonna struggle with. Hellbird Dawson ones, the Uncharted 2 tone mapping operator. And they're just available in the uh, standard library um, in Nineveh now. Yeah, I mean, we can try. We can try Reinhardt, but. Um... If we go back here and just go and look at our flame gradient, and just wrap this in a Reinhardt and. Yeah, again, it's got an exposure. So I'm just not sure what sensible values for these things are. Of course, this needs to be a Vec3 again. Oops. And this is just, again, just feels like it purely down to a, I don't get what I'm really tweaking with here. Um, but if you want to, hey Seba, how you doing, man? <laughs> you don't have to be a tone mapping operator. I released you from your journey. Um, yeah, so this is kind of weird. Let's have a look at this again. It's just a square with color, so it is. It's a noise with a really hard edge on it. So, like looking at this down here, like. He's got some random noise. Uh, it doesn't. It might not be Perlin actually. That might be. We could just use something a little more chaotic. Um, or we could just up the. Uh, where is it? Up the factor here a bit. Um, actually, yeah, his frequency is just very different. Oh, why does it start up every damn time? I'm trying to read this. Um, yeah. So if it's less than 0.5, then alpha equals one. Else, alpha equals zero. So all we do is we say, we're gonna take the step um, when the value of the um, Perlin noise crosses over 0 0.1 in the original case, or 0 0.5 was the one he recommended, but it looked bizarre. Um, then this function returns one, right? And otherwise it returns zero. And so it'll be one um, for most of the time until we cross 0 0.5 and then it will be zero, which is correct like if it's less than 0 0.5 0 sorry it's one and then otherwise zero and rather than sticking this in the alpha seeing as we're not blending with anything right now we just multiply this color by the result of this function which again should be should be what we want um and then he's just changing that so where it it was noise uh, less than 0 0.5. It's now lo noise less than 0 0.5 times gradient. Um, so all he's doing is changing the threshold. And so the gradient function, which is just, which is just a linear gradient, you know, like there's nothing special there, um, but it looks really shitty. Yeah. And it just seems to be having so little effect right now. Yeah, the gradient is just not severe enough. I mean, you can fuck with it, but um, it's just going to make it die a lot earlier. I don't know, maybe we can do that, actually. But look, that's just a completely different result. <laughs> that's just so fucking different. 
And I'm not sure if that's just the bloom that's like washing that out so much. But there is something different here. Yeah, noise.y is less than time time speed. That's fine. Yeah, that's uh, again, we do that just by we're scrolling this noise um, by adding. Yeah, by where is it up here? No noise. Oh, yeah, here we go. By subtracting the vector two with now in the y coordinate. So that gives us our time and our scrolling. How is he getting such big features out of that? It's really interesting. Maybe it is just, um, I think I've got a, a different, I've got a few different kinds of noise. Uh, so let's go and pick something else because maybe Perlin's just too um, contiguous. What is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Polka dot noise, star noise. Nah, we don't want those. Um, Perlin simplex, FBM. No, it's not there. Fuck. That's annoying. We could really do go with some of that now. Um, random? Random. There we go. Rand. Uh, close all these files. Don't need that. Back here. So where's our Perlin? Let's just do Rand instead. Whoops. That's Rand, not Rand. <laughs> Whoops. Well, that's a very different result. Yep. Man, do love that random noise. <laughs> no. Um, do I have a simplex noise? I guess not. How much bloom you need to throw at that for that to actually make sense but i'm uh, assuming more i'm assuming some a lot more than some um interestingly though let's just look at this gradient on its own because there's something a little off here back for flame grab uv yeah that's what i was expecting that it becomes zero almost immediately. So. Okay, let's go pretty much the same route he's doing then. If noise is less than 0 0.5. So let's just go. Right, noise is stew pearl up here. Oops. If noise is less than 0 0.5. Uh, then we're going to return 1, otherwise 0. Cool. Let's get rid of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then he's saying that if uh, like, well, the next step was to just take that gradient that was over the space, which again, let's have a look at that gradient quickly. Flame grab, UV. We can't just do it for a tenth of the screen. So that was the gradient that covers the whole screen. And you multiply that um, gradient by 0.5. Actually, I've already got it up there, haven't I? It's just not the same, mate. It's just not the same. We get the scrolling, but these are very different results. Are you seeing it? Because <laughs> I'm not. Sanjama's saying, I think you can just power that gradient a bit to get you what you want. Yeah, actually, that's a very good point. And I, uh, yeah, I should try that. It's just odd, you know? Like, that's. Uh... I 
Oh, it's EXPT for uh, less, but yeah, same deal. Um, and always saturate your pals. That's the, the advice that we get from um, Jake on all his streams, so we should follow that. Let's uh, just look at the gradient again for a second, because we want to design that a little. Ah, no, we're just raising up the high end. Um... Oh, of course, wait a second. Let's get rid of this one minus for a second and have a look at this. Yeah, that's... Oh, wait a second. <laughs> no. That's where I want the one. That's what I was doing wrong. Okay. Let's even just get rid of the POW for a second. I probably was doing that. No, that's roughly what I have before. But yeah, that just looks way better with a bit of POW on it. Cool. So then we can apply that. And we're still, though, like, it doesn't affect the threshold just that much. Um, unless, of course, looking at his source noise, there was one thing which, like, this looks very much in the range of um, 0 to 1. There's not any big holes in there to begin with. So I'm um, doing the 0 0.5 stuff here. Gets a much better result. Okay, fine. Um, that's roughly what we were going for. In fact, actually, we can change our power now. And actually, yeah, it was better. <laughs> Small is better. Um, and now can be a bit faster than this. Okay, so... Use time to move the noise. Add some color near the disappearing areas. Green times. Oh, I'm glad that we're multiplying green. So I'm guessing that's... Um, let's just, yeah, let's just call that color. And we'll do call multiplied by. He wants to mess with green. So one, zero, one, zero. And this is the value of GB. So this is the value we're meant to be fucking with. And you're just going to keep playing every time I open it up. One plus two gradient times noise. Um, so gradient times noise. Okay. Um. Times, gradient, uh, noise. And then add gradient to that for some reason. Because it's a good fudge factor. And then we add one. Wait a second, add one? That's going to put it like... Oh yeah, there's, <laughs> there's no good uh, multiplying the green component when you have no green component. Um... Oh, actually, yes. Seeing as we're multiplying this with the final result, we can just do... Yeah, wait a second. Let's have a look at this. Um, X of color. Something for green. Z of color, because we're not using it yet. And zero. Blah! X does not like be being called with an integer. What the fuck? Where's it? Oh, yeah. And yeah, we don't need to do that actually at all because it's that's the float. That's the... Uh, it's more a value than a color. Let's uh, do that. And again, so if there was any kind of green component down here at all... Ugh, Jesus, though. That fucks up the entire background. Um, oh, okay, let's let's think about this. So here's one as he has the square, like the square with color on it to begin with, and then he's multiplying the alpha. Um, oh yeah, because R square is this full region. So if we set anything in here. Yeah, it gets uh, entrained in, and I can't. 
I have to set it to something for you to be able to see it. But, um... Man, that's gross. But anyway, yeah, that's apparently some of that idea. Strange actually yeah, he gets a lot more, um... A lot more thresholding there. Hmm. I think I've applied that incorrectly. And again, still looks super shitty. Um, I'd even be happy with with that. <laughs> so yeah, skipping the uh, skipping the fucking around with the color, seeing as I'm definitely not equipped to be dealing with those. Um, then there's the possibility of applying this to a mask, which I think I actually just before the stream threw. There was something awful in here. Where is it? Awful mask. There we go. So let's, uh... What it'll be? Dirt, load, image, text... Actually, there it is. Okay. Awful mask. Do that. Def var. Bad. Is that. Actually, we're gonna set bad to be... Um, we're gonna sample this because we need a sampler if we're gonna read from it. Okay, so we've sampled that texture now. Uh, we need to pass it up to the fragment shader. Um, so let's do that. Bad is a sampler 2D. Right, so that's up there now. And then apparently we can just, uh, we could text, we could just sample that texture. And so it'll be squashed because we've got this horrible view here, but um, then it should be inside that range. Now we're going to have to do things to this because we're, uh, we're in a weird position here. Let's have a look. Um, our gradient. Let's drop the uh, power and see what we get. Um, no. I'm going to multiply this UV by 2, so we're, uh... Oh, that means we're going to be sampling outside the texture, and we're going to get two of them! Which we don't want. Um... I actually want to move this guy. Let's just go and get the uh, bad sampler again, and change its sampling parameters. How is that done, actually? There's, um... It's something params. Um... I can't remember. Let's check the documentation. Sampler. Woof, there's a lot of that. Um, wrapping. LOD. Um, okay, so if we just look at the wrap, for example, of that. Oh, if I could type for any shits, uh, we can see it's repeat. And so what we actually want to do is um, set that to be clamped, I think. Let's look at the documentation for wrap. Wrapping has, yeah, clamp to edge, clamp to border. Let's just do clamp to edge. Clamp to edge, yes, there we go. Right, now there's only one of them, and we should move it. Um, so I think we just do minus 0.4. 5, 1.5, let's just do a back to 1.5. That was underwhelming. Um, oh yeah, clamp to border is horrible. Um, clamp to edge rather. Let's, what happens if we do clamp to border? That's better. Okay, so we've moved it along slightly. Blech. Right. Um, I need to get back an understanding of what I'm doing here. So, if we take out the flame noise... Oh, it's upside down as well. Oh, man, that's disgusting. This is wrong in every way. Um, why 
one, minus one. Nope, that we sampling outside. Um, ah, what is it? We're going to want to... Let's just do this. It'll be mirrored, but it'll work. Um, and it's chopped off the top, which is handy. for making things that look pretty. Wait, what? Oh yeah, of course. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Let's leave it back at one and just have the whole damn thing take up space. I'm interested in why it's chopped the top off though. I didn't think it was that garbage. Let's get rid of this mask because it is not helping anything. Well, at least got to that bit. That's the only bit that I'm kind of feeling vaguely okay with okay, at the moment. Messing with this threshold at least gives something that I can work with. Yeah, that's a little better. So then you, by upping this... And then saturating the ramp a bit more. There's something that's a little better. If I spend all evening on this, it's going to suck. So, <laughs> invert for the win. Yes. Totally. Um, this was meant to be a five-minute distraction, and it became a lot longer. So, let's just not have this for a while now. Let's just, uh... <laughs> let's pretend that didn't happen. And we can go back to the fact that there are spaceships around here. What could we do with the last half an hour? It'd be cool actually just to make a couple of emitters for, um... Yeah, just a couple of emitters for bullets and stuff like this. So if it was going to be a bullet hell game. Yeah, we'd need some of that. So we could just make a couple of actors for that. Um, after that, it's kind of like, I, I feel like we should go into really into a code cleanup, which is a bit boring. So, um, let's make an emitter. So I'm going to make a new kind of bullet first. Um, enemy bullets, and otherwise it's going to be exactly the same, except it dies if it collides with me. Or it's not in the world anymore. Yeah, let's do that. That's an enemy bullet. And then we want to define a new actor. Let's just do this. Emitter. We'll call it a spin emit. Spin emitter. Spin emit. There we go. Um, and what it's going to do is that every... Every certain amount of time, it's going to fire a new bullet. Now the... I can't remember why I needed... I think I should just be able to go make stepper... Fire. Make stepper seconds 0.1. So this is going to fire every 0.1 seconds. Um, it's going to, every step, it's going to rotate itself. So it's going to turn left by, I don't know, some number of degrees, 0.1. And when you fun call an emitter just to see if it's time to, to shoot, um, then we should be able to just spawn a bullet. So let's do <clears throat> spawn an enemy bullet.
from myself. And I don't need to say who fired it, I don't really care about that. In fact, we can remove that from enemy bullet, in fact. Wait a second. Have I just started writing completely in the wrong place? Why am I writing down here? How did I even do that? Okay. Okay, let's try that again. So now, if we uh, spawn one of these guys, th they don't actually... This uh, spinamit should have a vision. Um, well, it's going to look like a bullet for now. That, that's, that's a place to start. Um, let's just go with spawn um, a spinamit. Ah. Spinamit at... Zero, zero. Self is unbound. Oh, goody. Um, yeah, just do that. I think we have to do spawn like this. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Holy shit. Actually, we don't want the announcements anymore. Um, turn left by, yeah, one degree every time. Four degrees every time. There we go. And maybe less often than every 0.1 seconds. Actually, that was cooler then. Um, for, if we're going to have lots of things that are going to be spawning things all the time, we need ways of turning off this uh, announcement stuff. Because most of these we're not going to be interested in. But it is cool to see that our bullets are in fact colliding with this ship just fine. Um, also... We don't want to just emit bullets from one side. You should emit from like four sides at once. So. You should turn left four. And then you should get. One th Let's, uh, what do we have in our. Yeah, compass direction. That was it. Actually, I'd love to just be able to use the turn function. Let's just do um, spawn an enemy bullet and then turn left 90. Because this is how I want to write it as a kid. Yeah, fuck yeah, that's how it should be. Nice. Really need to turn off those names. Um, how do, where do we announce names? Actors. Spawn. Noisy spawn. There we go. Um, it'd be kind of cool if we could just define which actors announce what they spawn and which don't. Um, let's say if this one is noisy. Nil. Now it's going to freak out, I think, when I expand this because it's not going to know what to do with noisy. So let's go to this macro and see what we can do with it. So keyword vars... Um, are these ones, they're used down here, the structure combined visual and tile count, and we'll say noisy is going to be another one. Uh, we don't use noisy anywhere yet though, so let's go and um, set it up. Um, it means we're going to have to have a flag on the default actor to say whether it's noisy or not. So let's do that. Noisy, um, its default form is true. So that's that. Um, then let's go and visual. Yeah, let's see what visual is used. So initialize actor. Um, when it's created, it should um, specify it. So. With slots. Oh, here we go. Noisy is a slot. And then we can say set f noisy to be... Um, not null noisy. It would actually be good to just assert that... Because noisy should either be true or false. It shouldn't be some other object. Um, so let's go and look at that destructuring bind again. And just go assert... Um, 
Remember, noisy is in the list of true or false. There we go. Um, noisy down here. Now we don't have to do this because we know it's going to be nil or true. We set noisy to be to whatever the value we specified in the macro was. And there's one last bit is that when ah. Oh. Yeah, for us to be able to update this live, we need to add another thing to this function, which is just a terrible way of doing it. Um, new noisy. Let's go and use this with uh, noisy. Set if noisy is new noisy. There we go. And then new valid states. And this is noisy. Let's just see what happens if we go with this. Go back to test and say like we should now be able to where do we noisy. Here we go. If I expand this macro now, the macro should itself should expand. And then we can find that noisy is at least going to be set to nil. Um, yeah. So at least I can compile this now. This will not have stopped things uh, yelling. And actually, what's this note saying? Undefined variable noisy. Damn it. Where is that being... Is that not within the... Oh, it's not within the scope of the uh, with slots. Okay. With slots. Do, do, and then put that inside there. Recompile this. Now it doesn't complain. Now we need to use that piece of information. Which is... Whenever we update... Yeah. Whenever we update the actor... Um, we are going to... Is there a place we set self? Wherever that is. Um, okay, maybe not. Actually, where's... If we go down here... Actor kind... The position, the arguments. Ah, oh, it's so tempting. Where is it? I feel like we're close here. Optional, noisy. Oh yeah, this is going to be a... Uh... Oh yeah, no, okay, yeah, fine. It's already set up. There is a variable for this already. Okay, so let's go back up. Update actors. There is update actor here, and then just go let um, noisy spawn be whatever the slot value of um, actor noisy is. Jesus Christ, that's so much scrolling on the left hand side. Nice, now that's stopped. So at least we should be able to go in here, and anytime we set, we can set noisy to be true, or we can turn it off. And if we spawn bullets, they should still be announced because we've not been set to quiet, which is cool. Um, Love like Semtex saying reminds me of the programming language logo now. Yeah, totally. Like that's uh, it would be cool to have stuff be that easy. We're way too big now for this uh, <laughs> for this nightmare emitter. Um. Okay. And compass dear. Compass direction. What does this do? Oh, so taken given our current angle. Yeah. Compass dear move. Okay, so then we can specify a direction. In kind of compass direction kind of thing. It's a bit weird. Um, okay, there we go.
<laughs> nice. Okay, ideas. What kind of emitters do we need? If we're gonna have a, if you're gonna have a bullet hell game, for a start, these uh, ships are too big as well. Where are the aliens? Can we change their size? I think there's ways of doing that. Oh no, their size is set purely by the uh, size of the sprite. That was it. Um, and that was to simplify just dealing with size in general. Things were always going to be in certain set units. Um, I think I actually make God quiet as well. Can I do that? Should work. Now I won't get spawn notifications every time a new alien turns up. Love like some just move 50, turn left 45, move 50. Yeah, right? It's like, it's a fairly understandable system as well. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, I know. Screen height and game unit 600. Let's set that to something a bit bigger. 1,000. And then suddenly this starts. Oops, shit. We need to do one of those, and we need to be able to move a hell of a lot faster than this nonsense. But yeah, emitters can work just while they're on screen. So, um... When... Let's just go... Let's do this, and then say... Um, when not in screen, um, die. Whoops. <laughs> that worked quickly. Uh, yeah, because it was going that way. Now we should be able to say spawn. Off he goes. Need to spawn him like at 400 or something. Cool. Let's have God start spawning those guys everywhere. Okay, so... Um, that's alien counter. Oops. Interesting. Why didn't that like being reconfigured? Now spawn count is gone as well. What a shitter. Huh. That's a bummer, because that should have been... I like that God's just called James for some reason. Spawn counter is unbound. Ooh. Why? Let's find spawn counter in spawn keys. What are spawn keys? Ah, damn it. More stuff I don't remember that we did before. Um... What are spawn keys? Define actor. Okay. Let's go look at define actor. <sighs> okay, so the spawn arguments are whatever the arguments we pass in are. That's okay.
So some arguments are passed in. And we initialize the actor. We iterate over them to it like by two. So every second one. So if those are key arguments, then it's going to be the keys that we're looking at. Um, and that would make sense because they're called spawn keys. Okay, so unless spawn counter is in spawn keys, which it shouldn't be because those would be the keyword arguments. Um, ah, but it's uh, comparing string equals. Then set up the thing. Wouldn't we always want that though? When would we not want that to set up? We obviously had a reason for writing this code. It was to fix something. Damned if I can remember what. What time are we at? 21.46. Hmm. That screen is so barren right now. It's sad. We need to fix this. Let's just print the keys. Let's, uh... Yeah, where is it? Um, spawn keys. Print this. And fuck it. Let's print the spawn arms as well. And bring up the REPL, which will be down here. And say continue. Oh no, can't do that until we test alien recompile god again. And then say continue. And that hit the REPL. Come on, bring it back. Really? It's not even getting there? Okay, we're just going to have to give it something to work with right now, which would just be Lambda. Yeah, the Lambda that does nothing. Fine. Um, let's just continue. Wow, what? When it turns to set the slots value to what this thing, the uh, alien counter is missing from the object. God, James. Fine. Um, yes, it will be now. Uh, oh, right. That was strange. Not entirely sure what happened there. Don't like when those ships die. Oh yeah, because we've <laughs> we hard coded the screen size. Uh, let's just um, keep them going until they're outside the world, which is also hard coded. So that's fun. In screen. But not in world. There we go. Okay, let I just wanted things to be simple. What did I do? Okay, so let's go emit counter. Alright, we'll do it's call it spin counter because I want a spinner. Right. And when the game is running, whenever spin counter is going, then we spawn. A spin emit. Um, currently, it's always at the same place, which is garbage. Um, so let's put it at 300. Let's just start getting that going. And oh, it shouldn't be every 10 seconds. Not a chance. It's got to be every two seconds. We don't need this. There we go. <laughs> Dodge that. Um, okay, so the spin emit being from the same place is rubbish. Let's say random uh, 400 minus 200. So we get any number between minus 200 and 200. So there comes one. Um, we're not actually using speed for anything. Let's just get rid of that. Um, not using fired by, so let's get rid of that. Let's say we fire every 0.5 seconds. Yeah, that's rubbish. Gets a lot more boring then. It's also just hard to reason about now. Ah, that's cool. That's how it should look. Yeah, the collision system's holding up okay as well. 
Let's uh, see what happens when we uh, go look at the collision maps, because this will be nice. Where are we? Update all existing actors. Yeah, there's going to be something... No, no, that's not it. Where is it? Up here. Here we go. So, that's, that's the collision mask for the aliens. Let's look at the collision mask for the bullets. Because methinks it's going to be kind of cool. What? That's weird. Oh, is it because no one's... No one asking for collisions with bullets? That's not right. Oh, these are enemy bullets. Of course. That's better. <laughs> yeah, so we need to actually... Um... Sun Jammer, actually, you know what, dude? We, we, you should join me on the stream one time and we should just, like, make some horrendous... Some, some just god-awful shooter. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's move me out of the way. Or at least down a bit. There we go. Oh, God. There is a command for this somewhere. There we are. Where's, uh, let's move that enemy. Where's that mask thing? Yeah, instead of that being bottom left, let's just do top left. There we are. Oh, it's just so nice to see the collisions working, though. So what we could do actually is just look at existing games. There's some particularly good ones that I can't remember the name of now, but friends know, <laughs> especially Sunjama. And uh, we could steal some of steal some of their design patterns. But that's that's not bad, you know. That's uh, I mean, that's uh, I think the frame rate's going to be pretty shit right now, but we can still have a look. So FPS is. Right, right now is locked to 60. So that's, where are these print statements coming from? Oh yeah, I know why. Because we've... Uh, I am the most distractible motherfucker in the world. One second. Let's just go and... Where is it? Define actor. Let's print. There we go. Print, you bastard. And you can fuck off too. And then we can go back to the test alien. And we can go... It was God, wasn't it? He's probably the one printing out all this shit. Good. Now it's stopped. Fine. No! Who's still... Two still doing things, yep. Fucks. Okay. There we go. Right, so... Yeah, the FPS right now is going to be locked to 60. Oh, 59. I bet it's dirt slow. This is what I'm really worried about. Like, um... Keppel.sdl2... Uh... Vsync... Nil. See, we're only getting like 126 FPS on this. That's bollocks. Oh, okay. Like, uh, it's now going too fast to keep anything off the, on the screen. Let's uh, step this up a bit. Let's just say we get a spin counter every 0.3 seconds or something. Let's, um... This isn't fast enough. We can do better than that. Look at this. It's getting slow. Oh, it's below 60. Oh, this is shit. <laughs> yeah, it gets worse all the time that we do that. Oh, and we just broke it. Nice. <laughs> um, invalid index for... Oh, yeah, we hit our cap of 20,000 actors. <laughs> Let's proper cave this up. Totally, dude. Yeah, 5 by, by 5 pixel hitbox, please. Yeah, totally, we can do that. Um, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, the collisions right now are based on the actual uh, yeah image. But, uh, oh, fuck, we crashed it. That's awesome. We probably just shouldn't allow it to fuck itself up like this. But it's also pretty cool. It's nice that we hit our limit. Um, actually, it wasn't too bad. Like, it wasn't very long before 20,000 actors that we... I mean, like, we fell below 60 frames a second, which is stupid. But we did it when we must have been around 15,000, 16,000 actors with collisions. So that's not god-awful, but it's, it should be a lot better than that. And the collisions we're doing at the moment are only, have I collided with something in the mask? We, we're going to need something more... Um, 
informative than that. So what we'll do is the next, uh, another collision system. And there I want to do AABB um, axis aligned bounding boxes for our collision. So all you do there is uh, everything has a box. Um, so that'll be the outside here. Um, and this guy's one will be, well, it'll be axis aligned, won't it? So it'll be like this. And the idea is you just, um, oh God, there's another one. Right, you see if they if they overlap each other, and if they do, we'll um, say that that's a collision. So, not as accurate as this, um, but still pretty good. The other thing is actually, this was a 2048 by 2048 world um, with pixel perfect collisions. We could drop the resolution. If we drop the resolution of the collision maps in half, um, then it's accurate to every two pixels. Still not bad, still not bad, and we would happily run all this. I kind of want to do uh, the AABB stuff with a uh, compute because, again, it's just all these are just excuses to play with these toys, and I haven't used compute properly yet. So it'd be quite good to do that. Um, another thing to do is um, implement quad trees and do some CPU side collisions, or we can look at actually how to do quad trees on the GPU. I don't know how that's meant to work. All kinds of questions there. Uh, but we're actually about at the end of our time. Like, we got three minutes left, so there's really not much else to do. Um, yeah. Any last comments or questions? You're free to throw them out now, or we will probably just end this. Let's see. Actually, in the time that's left while you're typing questions, I'm going to just restart this thing and uh, see if we can get it just build so we can push this and let's see is there anything else i really should have checked that first but yeah i did i did don't be an idiot chris it's all fine oh yeah the one thing we should remove actually is that piss poor attempt at flames this thing whoop. can go away Doesn't matter, it only took a few seconds to write, so we can just write it again. And Awful Mask can go as well. And then what do we do? We go in the package, we start it up. Where is it? Daft. Um, there we go. It's running. We enable concurrent hints so we can actually see what we're doing and then we go to test alien and we just check how often these spin counters are going to get made and um yeah we probably just compile it and then set if what was strange there actually is that the ship didn't get created what why is this not Oh, wait a second, we're not running. Oh, come on. This is, again, like, I don't know why I do this every time. It's like, yeah, we're just gonna... We'll just do this last thing on the stream and it'll look awesome. And then every, every fucking time, I, uh... It ends up breaking. Just every time. That's just amazing. Ah, oh, come on. Spawn. God. Over there. Whatever. Okay, I'll fix this off stream because it's going to be boring to watch. Uh, but we got a lot of mess up there. That was cool. Uh, Sanjama saying, it's weirdly annoyed at how haphazard... How... how, how ah, ah, words! Words! How haphazardly effects like that fire depend on bloom. Yeah, man, it's kind of... Uh, I mean, we could do a, just a really quick, um, like, two, da two down samples and additive blend, but it's still... Yeah. Zymas is saying, steal all of these patterns. Oh, yeah, you black label. Good, good job. That's exactly the one I was thinking of. And, uh, yes, Totally. Uh, we should try and implement some of those. Look at that mess. It's fucking awesome. 
Ah, they're pulses. So yeah, they pulse like like do like a wave, and then turn off for a bit and another wave. But it'll be fun to do. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Can't think of anything else right now. Why is? Oh yeah, I, what I'm hearing is I, I opened uh, YouTube, and so now I'm getting all the noise from that video coming out my headphones. Right. I think that's the lot. Uh, thanks for hanging around today. Uh, sorry for the, <laughs> the pile of random um, crashes we're getting at the moment. But to be fair, that's kind of true to form. So you're probably used to it by now. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure what we'll do next week. I would quite like to tinker with some other stuff. Depending on how um, enthused I am to uh, do this bullet health stuff. But seen as Friday is the game jam, I'd quite like to... Uh, put down, uh, I actually forgot when it was. Was it this Friday or next Friday that the game jam is? Um, dun, 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 dun. Next Friday is the jam. Cool. So not this Friday. That makes sense. Sweet. Right. Cool. So yeah, whatever happens, I need to have this in a working state for doing the jam. I'm just going to do a Bomberman clone. So this uh, having... Millions of fucking particles is really completely useless. Uh, thanks, Bomb to Pimp. Glad you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's your lot. I'll catch you next time. Ciao.